Hey, mate. Thanks to my amazing supporters. Did you hear the good news? We're going to the Canaries. Brilliant. I'm taking Betty, the telescope built by me and robot engineer Kerry, to one of the best astro locations in the world because we're taking on a professional observatory in an epic astrophotography shootout. Good luck, everybody. Bad luck, ICAC. The observatory staff don't think Betty stands a chance. Never. Maybe he wins. That would be quite embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> but if I've got the science right, you better be on your game. Then this amateur versus professional battle <laughs> might just go the way of the Betty. I need to say something. I'm Betty team. I began working on a budget telescope that could match the resolution of a multi-million pound observatory more than a year ago. The standard chance, it has to be small enough to take abroad. And that's because in the UK, the atmosphere is so wobbly, it jiggles the stars around, which leads to blurry shots. But surely, I hear you say, a diddy scope like this won't cut the mustard. Well, it turns out an 8-inch Newtonian could get within a whisker of the resolution of a giant observatory if... if it's pretty much optically perfect. This, if it works, is the ultimate travel scope. Only a year ago, Betty was quite away from optical perfection. To get her working properly, right, I needed the help of Kerry. Hi, Roy. Yes, Roy. Yes, Kerry. How are you doing? His robot building factory boasts over a million dollars worth of high precision CNC machinery. Kerry stiffened Betty's tube with carbon fiber and helped increase her potential resolution with a radical secondary mirror holder. This could be a telescope revolution doing it this way. But something was stopping us from seeing how close we'd got to optical perfection. I think they made the mirror glass out of, well, jelly, basically. Anything that touched the front of the mirror seemed to bend it out of shape, with horrific results. Tested Betty out last night. She's still got triangular stars. And we are two weeks, five days from going to the Canary Islands. We've tried three different ways of holding the mirror, and none of them have worked. To be honest, I am now. I'm a little bit worried. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. Nearly 200 people have donated money to get Betty to the Canaries. Yeah, we're just... But at the moment, she's not much more than an oversized paperweight. Hi, Rory, how are you doing? Good. Go on, mate. Yeah, it's fine. This is the problem with Kerry running a business and doing this, is that we can't get everything done and it's less than a week till we go to the Canaries, folks. Eek! Sod's law means that this week... Hi, all right? Kerry's business is running him ragged. I'm going to be five minutes. Yeah. And then we'll go in the uh, meeting room, if that's all right. OK, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Realistically, have we got to get Betty finished today? Yeah, today's the last day. Just in time, we find a solution to the mirror problem. We simply glue the mirror onto the back plate. Now nothing is touching the front of the mirror, but we don't have time to test it. What I'm thinking is we're going to get out to the Canaries with virtually no real testing of the revisions we've made. So I think I'm going to have to take a proper tool case with me. So, so that we can tweak it. Yeah, that's a professional way of putting it. So through nobody's fault, I'm taking an untested telescope to the Canaries. But that's okay, because there's enough in the budget to bring a robot engineer with me. Hi guys. Funny. You made it. With some left over to bring a musical genius. Got enough cases? It's mostly carrot. And, of course, a pink rabbit. Let's go! Go that way, I think. With their support, what could possibly go wrong? Hurry up, Rory, they're getting away. Hold up, fellas. We're gonna miss the plane. Our destination is a giant volcanic island 400 miles off the coast of Africa. This volcano goes by the name of Tenerife, and it pokes its head up into an astronomical golden zone. And you can see the golden zone as you fly in. Rory, you're gonna wanna see this. It's basically the bit above the clouds, 
the air up there is super unwobbly and that's what makes this place special. And those little white dots are the observatories. And in three days time, one of these Goliaths will be taking on Betty in an astrophotography shootout. And if Betty is now optically perfect, then the professional nerds are gonna get a shock. Oh my God, it's so hot. <laughs> Oh, I know. I think I'm slowly dying. Anyway, cheers, boys. Thank you. Cheers. I've drunk mine. Mine's gone as well. Fingers crossed. We what? fixed Bessie. Jink. Jink. Annoyingly, oh, no. we can't check Bessie tonight because we're staying below the cloud line. Next morning, bad news from the robot factory. Kerry, unfortunately, is leaving us. Work to do. Work to do. He's got to be in Germany on Wednesday, it can't be delayed, so he's got to leave us, fly back to Wales and then go fly out to Germany. Twas ever thus. Although we're losing a key player, it doesn't mean we'll lose tomorrow night's match. Tonight, while Kerry flies back to Blighty, I'm gonna give Bessie her final test in the astronomical golden zone. Hopefully, she won't need tweaking. To get to the astronomy golden zone, you have to climb up through an invisible layer of warm air, known as an inversion layer. This layer traps the clouds and turbulent, wobbly atmosphere beneath it. And when you pass through it, at about 2,000 metres, the climate and vegetation changes dramatically. Wow, it's something else, isn't it? It's like something out of a sort of Martian movie. It does feel like you're walking on another planet. This is where the Apollo test team was done. Really? Moon buggy. Wow. Here, there is almost no rainfall. It's a desert. And the atmosphere is like a mill pond, which means when you look into space from up here, it's like you are in space. Amazing to think that that probably came from there. Yeah. Yeah, and it didn't roll either. Ooh, splat. Before heading off, Kerry wants to have a quick trip to the top of the, what I assume is, the still active bit. You, can just, you guys can just tell me. you got to go with me. you got to go. For some reason, Rick wasn't so keen. But we made him come anyway. Annoyingly, you needed a permit to get to the very top. But it was worth it because A, Rick loved <laughs> the journey back down. How was that, Rick? Really? <laughs> and B, from up the volcano, we spotted the perfect place for Betty's dress rehearsal. What do you think? Very nice. Normally, Very nice. I wouldn't be able to afford staying in a fancy hotel like this. But this time, I can. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for these guys. These are the guys who help pay for the trip. Their names are immortalised on this very fancy stainless steel plug, which we are about to screw onto Betty's exterior. What do you reckon, Bunny? You've been wanting to come here for blooming years. Yes, I have, but to the beach, Rory. Here it is. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks, guys. I mean, it is blooming astro dream come true for me. There goes Kerry. Yeah. Bye, Kerry. Bye. Wreck that clutch again. Thank you, everyone who has helped make this happen. Tonight, I hope to show you it's all been worth it by giving you a glimpse of Betty's true power. Just gonna get Betty's mirrors lined up with a laser before we begin. Alrighty, she's ready. It's only now. I've had the first chance to look up and it is absolutely bonkers. I'm even picking the Milky Way up with live view on my camera. All right, let's see how she does, fingers crossed. With the mirror problem presumably fixed, this should give us our first taste of how close we've gotten Bessie to optical perfection. Oh no. Triangle stars. This mirror has been a massive curse. Still, with just glue on the back of this mirror and nothing pressing down on it, or the front or the sides, and nothing pressing down with it, those screws are not going through the aluminium, we are still not getting perfect stars. And without perfectly round stars, 
we do not stand a hope. And if we don't stand a hope of matching the big telescopes, you've got to ask the question, what the heck have we done coming all the way out to the Canaries? I mean, it's just, it's catastrophic. Now I know the mirror itself is fine because before coming here, I got mirror making legend, Terry Pierce. Hi Terry. Hello. To check it out. Just setting your mirror up for you. Thanks okay. mate. And he gave it a big thumbs up. That's absolutely perfect to the very edge. There's no, no astigmatism in that. If the mirror's good, then it must be the thing that's holding it that's at fault. I've got 20 hours to get the mirror holder fixed. If I don't, this mission will have failed. I'll look like a complete idiot and I'll feel terrible for the people who kindly donated to make this thing happen in the first place. Something, something here is causing the mirror to flex, to bend. Something is putting pressure on it. And the only thing I can think of is that the aluminium is bending and that is causing the mirror to bend. It's possible that pressure from the springs is making the aluminium bend by an infinitesimally small amount. And yet this might be enough because incredibly the mirror has to be accurate to within less than a wavelength of light. Next morning, oh, it just looks amazing, doesn't it? Bessie has got just 10 hours till she takes on a giant observatory. Oh, I'm in the wrong side because the steering wheel's on the other side. And we have to fix the mirror holder before then. I'm going to go off and go to a hardware store and in my best Spanglish, try and get the stuff that I need to do what I think is going to finally fix Bessie. The hardware store is an hour away. Oh. After much waving of hands, the extremely nice man who doesn't understand me I just, uh, I just, uh, brings me the stuff he thinks I need. Double-sided sticky tape. Uh, this looks like it gets rid of mould in bathrooms, but no good in this. I haven't found the perfect thing. And there's, I don't speak any Spanish, obviously. There's a bigger hardware store 40 minutes away. Da, where? Where is this place? But now we've only got eight hours till the big shootout. <laughs> oh man. Right. And how do I turn the windscreen wipers off? This place is massive. Massive. Very exciting news, guys. Very exciting. Up here, look at that. I think, I think this is what Betty needs. Wicked. I've got just three hours left to fix Betty. Bunny, how big are we going to look if we don't get Betty to work properly? I'd say massive. Yeah, absolutely huge ones. The first job is to cut the mirror off the aluminium backplate. And then I'm going to try and cushion the mirror, but also stick it with extreme 10 kilogram Scotch fix mounting tape. This stuff is three millimeters thick and should act like suspension. What I didn't count on was the industrial strength glue Kerry had used to fix the mirror onto the back plate. Oh, the scalpel's broken. Okay, we're on to a second knife. It doesn't really get in there. I genuinely don't think I'm gonna be able to get this off. This is a massive, massive disaster. Time for the big guns. In an hour, I need to pack up Betty and head off to the observatory. We are so, so stuffed. As a last resort, I turn to lens cleaning fluid, hoping the alcohol in it might dissolve the glue. And 10 minutes later, Oh yeah, come on. Careful, Rory. Come on. We got through the middle. I'm so glad. Oh, come on. Ah, oh. <laughs> yes. Look at this. I can't believe it. 
You've really done it. Really done it. It's not broken. Mirror is not broken, actually done it. That's part one. Part yeah. two is putting it back together. Putting it back together will be easy. We've got just 20 minutes left to get the mirror stuck to the back plate with the nice soft three millimeter thick Scotch mounting tape extreme. Fingers crossed we've now solved the mirror problem and double fingers crossed it doesn't fall out. I'm excited folks. I can't help having a little bit of dread in the pit of my stomach. Betty has to perform on one of the biggest stages in astronomy tonight and I don't even know if she will. Hey, Juan. This is local amateur astronomer so Juan much. and his mate Raquel. So Juan, hi Raquel. Who Raquel. works at the observatories. Thank you very much. So Juan seen my videos and was really keen and supersonically helpful and this would not be happening without him. So we have Juan to thank. Let's go. All right, let's go. I so wish the boys could have seen this. There are more astronomical and solar telescopes and instruments on this hillside than I can count. I'm guessing around about 70. And one of them, the mighty IAC-80, an 82 centimetre fat Richley Criterion telescope is due a maintenance night. And luckily for me, that means super lovely operator Carlos Hola. has a bit of telescope time with which to take on Betty. Never. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe he wins. That would be quite <laughs> The target for tonight's shootout is more than three million light years away, and found inside the galaxy M33. It's an enormous cloud of red gas where stars are being born. Whoever shoots this extragalactic nebulosity with the most detail wins. This isn't about how many photons she can collect, because obviously the IC80 is going to collect way more photons. This is about resolution. So that Bessie and the IC80 capture a similar number of photons, the IC80 will be shooting for just 10 minutes, and Bessie will be shooting for two hours. So, uh, Carlos, thank you. Here's the helmet. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. I would say good luck, <laughs> but I don't, I don't want you to have good luck. <laughs> I want something to go wrong. Let's yeah. see what happens. Let's know. see what happens, yeah. Are you competitive? I'm, I am, well, I am competitive, but when you're standing in front of the IC80, <laughs> <laughs> and when you carry Betty and she's like this, then one tends to think that I might have made a terrible error. I would hate to get arrested by the astronomy police for having too bright a light. As the sun sets, the hillside wakes up. Ooh, the sound of a observatory opening. Oh yeah, shoot that, yeah. It's like, oh, who's this new telescope on the block? It's Betty, everybody. Betty is here. You better be on your game. It's so exciting. Oh, I've just remembered, I don't know if Betty works. Uh, time to find out. I'm a bit nervous. Yes, me too. I've got a star. It's slightly out of focus there. First star. Oh, and it's round, everybody. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's game on, folks. We are finally going to be able to see if Betty can get close to the resolution of a giant observatory. I'm Betty team. I think that Betty can beat the IC80. My humble opinion, Betty won't beat the IEC 80, but she might match it. Because all telescopes, no matter how big, are limited in resolution by the wobbly atmosphere. So if Betty is sharp enough to hit that resolution limit, then in theory, her shots will be just as sharp as the IAC-80. But there's a problem. 
Oh, the breeze. To stay rock steady on this hilltop location, telescopes need a dome to protect them from the wind. Oh, the stars are wobbling. And my test shot of the Iris Nebula is showing clear signs of wind shape. Looks like. Okay, you're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more determined to beat the ICAC now than ever. <laughs> And unfortunately, that means I need to get down off this hill and set Betty up somewhere more sheltered. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, it's our pleasure. In two hours' time, the M33 Galaxy will be as high as it's going to get, and that's when I want to be shooting. So really, I need to find a new location and get set up within an hour. OK, here looks fine. Now, is a black cat crossing your path? Good luck or bad luck? I guess we're going to find out. Here, we're really sheltered. I'm by this, I don't know what it is, some kind of water tank thing. Pretty close to the observatory, just down the hill a bit. And because I'm still above the inversion layer, the sky is still incredibly clear. This is an amazing, amazing place. This time-lapse shot covers the two hours that Betty was shooting. Good morning, folks. Bessie, you've done amazing. Look at this. Look, M33, sharp as anything. The ICA, you better watch out because, oh, that was good. Uh, I'm not actually going to be able to process M33 today because, well, you'll find out in the next video, I'm going to La Palma, basically. Turns out I was a bit tied up in La Palma and didn't get to process till I got back to London. We're back. That La Palma trip was insane. But first thing I did when I got back was process M33. I started last night. Uh, I have just finished and let's have a look. Yes, let's have a look. There she is. It's an amazing shot. I am super pleased with this. Now, M33 is blossoming like a cherry tree in spring with just loads of nebula. And in this spiral arm is the extragalactic nebulosity that Betty and the IEC 80 were focusing on. Betty's managed to pull out spaghetti like detail. And unlike the IAC 80, Betty's wider field of view means she's able to get all the nebula in this entire galaxy, including ones I can't find the name for. Three million light years away this is. It is the most detailed, the most detailed shot I've ever taken. And unbelievably, these blue dots, they are actually stars. All right, now it's time to see how the IAC-80 did. First, I'm going to line up Betty's process shot to exactly the same field of view as the IAC-80's unprocessed shot. This is Betty. This is the IAC-80. Betty, the IAC-80. You can't even see any spaghetti bits on that one. Right now it looks unbelievably like Betty has done better than the IAC-80. And to be even having this conversation that we think Betty has done better is a victory. But it's not a fair fight, this, because Betty's shot in colour, which brings out the spaghetti bits, but also, I think I made a mistake. In the last 10 years, cameras have gotten twice as sensitive. Us amateurs have all got ones like this. They're awesome. But many professionals are stuck with the old school cameras. Because our cameras are twice as sensitive as the professional cameras, Betty should have just been shooting for an hour to match 10 minutes from the IAC-80. So I have taken an hour's worth of footage shot by Betty, black and white footage, and I've compared it with the 10 minute shot that the IAC-80 took. Uh, I've sharpened neither, there is zero processing, just an automatic stretch. This is Betty, and this 
is the IAC80. Betty, IAC80. The difference between an enormous observatory and this home-built telescope is there. Look at that. To the untrained eye, it looks like Betty has got incredibly close, and she has. But, and I'm probably the only person in the world who thinks this, I actually thought Betty would get closer. Now it turns out there was something that I overlooked, which is mind-blowing, in fact. And this is the reason why Betty was not able to get even closer to the IAC-80. I didn't find out until the night we were there. I assumed that the wobbly atmosphere was going to blur up both my shot and the IAC 80 shot by about one arc second. Betty's small size means she can't get any sharper than that anyway. But it turns out, in this incredible location, the atmosphere blurs the shots by much less. We're at 0 0.4 arc seconds. Yeah, that is the... <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> We're at 0 0.4 arc seconds. Yeah. And I tonight is a bad night. It's a, it's a bad night. Tonight, yeah. this is bad. It is yes. a bad night. The resolution limit is way lower in some parts of this planet than I thought it was going to be. And the only way, therefore, to match the IAC 80 is to actually get a bigger mirror. The mirror would need to be twice as fat. So, yeah, bittersweet in all honesty. In all honesty, I'm really excited because it means if I could take a telescope that's fatter than Betty to an incredible location like that, then we will be able to get results that are twice as sharp, which is just mind blowing. Sounds to me like he's planning his next mission. Hmm. Anyway. Here it comes. Um, I need to go back to the Canaries. And I thought to help fund me go back, I could sell some shots of this amazing, amazing galaxy. And after a lot of back and forth between me and one of the best printers in the world, here it is. I think it looks awesome. They've agreed to make a hundred prints. The first one is going to Kerry. Kerry, mate, you can be super proud of what Betty has achieved. She is a remarkable scope. Uh, the second one is going to my mate Andy, who lent me a backup mount, which I ended up using. Thank you so much, Andrew, for lending me the mount. So there's 98 of these left. Uh, that one sold out in a week. This one may or may not, I don't know. Uh, it, they come with a certificate of authenticity. If you miss buying this galaxy, but want to buy another one of my prints, then be sure to subscribe to my mailing list, because then you will receive a notification of when the next print run starts before anyone else. If you want to try your hand at astrophotography, why not check out my website, loads of tips and gear, and links to my affiliate astro shops, which just happen to be the best astro shops there are. If you enjoyed this film, I know I did, then you and I both need to thank these guys. These are my patrons. It is impossible to make a film as involved as this without the help from patrons. YouTube adverts just wouldn't cover it. I don't have enough views. Patrons can see my tutorials. They get access to hidden channels on the Discord server and get to message me whenever they like. And if you particularly enjoyed this particular film, then we also have to thank these guys. May your names live long in the halls of Nerd Haller. I would also like to thank our musical genius, Richtenstein. Be sure to check out his awesome albums on Bandcamp, link below. Oh, and the mods on my Discord server. You guys are just phenomenal, phenomenal. If you want something to watch now, then how about watching the story of Betty's birth, which is this one. Oh, share this film. Yeah. Big shout out to all the Tenerife Observatory peeps, especially Juan, Raquel and Carlos. Tassi bye everybody. I'll be seeing you next in La Palma. <laughs>